Components are the building blocks of scalable and efficient designs in Framer. Whether we're creating buttons, nav bars, cards, or footers, components allow us to design once and reuse elements across our projects. Using components, we can speed up our workflow, maintain perfect consistency, and make global changes to elements across our entire project or multiple projects in just a few clicks. In this lesson, we'll explore how to create, customize, and manage components in Framer, and how to make components super flexible with variants and variables. Let's jump in. Before we create our first component, let's look at what we're working with to figure out what makes sense to turn into a component in the first place. In my example project here, you can see I have a few of these nearly identical buttons. So this is definitely an element that should probably be a component. Now to turn one of these into a component, and it really doesn't matter which one since they're all virtually identical, we just wanna select the element. We just have to have a single element selected on the canvas, and we can either right click and choose create component or use the keyboard shortcut, which on a Mac is option command K, and on a PC would be control alt K. When we click on that, we get to give our component a name and it automatically takes on the name of the layer from the layer list. So in this case, this layer is called buttons slash primary CTA. And just like our color styles and our text styles, buttons slash is going to create a folder called buttons and it's gonna create within that primary CTA. So I'm gonna run with this and I'm gonna click create. We're automatically brought into this dedicated canvas view for our new component, but before we dig into this, let's go back to our homepage and talk about inserting instances of a component where they belong. Now you'll notice this element here, since it's the element that I created the component from, automatically gets turned into an instance of this component, which I could copy and paste elsewhere, like over here where these buttons are that I wanna replace with this component, or I can head to the assets panel. And on the assets panel, you'll find all of the components within your project. So here I have that buttons folder because of the way I named this, and I have primary CTA. And I can just click and drag this directly onto the canvas. And then I can delete this button so that I just have the component there replacing it. Now the size of this button does get inherited from the component itself, but I can change that. So I'm gonna change the width here from fit content to fill, and there we go. Another way to insert a component that'll save us a step is if I press Command K to bring up my quick actions menu or Control K on a PC, I can type the name of this button, so CTA, and here it is in my quick actions menu. Now, when I hit return to select it, I have a few options. I can insert this button, I can edit this button, or I can replace what I have selected on the canvas with this button. So by choosing that, in one step, I've replaced that button that was not a component, with my component. And you'll notice instead of inheriting the size from the component, it inherited the size from the layer that I replaced. So I really just saved myself a few steps. If you decide you don't want something to be a component anymore, you can always right click it and choose detach instance. And you can also replace this component with another component or replace all instances of this component with another component, which can be a huge time saver. We can also jump in and edit a component directly from any instance of it by either double clicking or selecting and pressing return on the keyboard. And you'll also find an edit component button on the properties panel. Now we're back in that dedicated canvas view for the component where we can make edits and create additional variants. Any changes we make here within this view will affect every instance of this component. And while we don't necessarily need to make any changes to this default state of this button, we might as well go ahead and create some states and variants that make this component more flexible. You'll notice that built into the canvas itself, we have the option to create a hover or pressed state for this button. And we also have the option of creating a whole different variant of this button. And variants are super powerful because you can start linking them together and you can create very dynamic interactions within a component. We're gonna save that for another course, but for now I'm gonna create a hover state for this. And when you create a hover state this way, it's automatically gonna set up the interaction that switches variants when the cursor hovers over it. So that part's already done for us. But for my hover variant here, I'm just gonna give it a different fill color and I'm just gonna swap it with this content 50. So that button will get a little lighter on hover. The next thing I wanna do while we're here, 
we are going to need an inverted version of this button. We had a black card in the middle that's going to need a white version of this button. So to do that, I'm going to click here to add a variant. And for this variant, I'm going to change the fill color to my content inverted. And I'm going to select that text layer and I'm going to change the text color to content 100, effectively reversing the foreground and background of this button. It'll also be helpful later if I name these variants correctly. So I'm just going to press Command R, which would be Control R on a PC, and I'm going to name this inverted. And then my primary variant, I could leave it alone or I could change the name to default. And for good measure, let's also add a hover state for our inverted version of this button. And for this, I'm just going to be lazy and do the same thing. I'm going to change it from white to that middle gray, and I'm going to change the text from black to content inverted, which is white. And there we have that. So now I can go back to the home page. I can find this version of the button, which before would have been a problem to replace with our component because it would be black on black. But I'm going to do just that. I'm going to do my little trick where I hit Command K. I do a search for our CTA button here. I select it and I choose replace. And of course, because the default variant is black, now we've got black on black. But because I have a second variant that I've created for myself, I can come over here to the properties panel and switch the variant from default to inverted. And boom, there we go. Now we've got another little problem starting to emerge where every instance of this button matching perfectly isn't necessarily a good thing. Those buttons that we replaced in these cards had different text content before. But you'll notice if I try to change the text content here, this entire component instance is like one object. So I can't click my way in there. If I double click, we go into edit mode for that component. And if I make a change here, it's going to affect every instance of this button. So this is where variables come in. If I want to make the text content of this button editable at the component instance level, I can select this text layer. I can head down to content and you'll notice a lot of the properties on the properties panel have this little plus sign next to them. And that is a mechanism to create a variable from this property. So from the content property, I'm going to click, I'm going to choose create variable. It's going to be plain text. And when I do so, the variables modal appears and it gives me a chance to give this variable a name. It's a good idea to name your variables because it will be confusing later when you go to edit them, you may not know what they mean. But in this case, Title does make sense. We could also name it button text, something like that. And the text that was written there before is going to become the default text, but this is now going to be editable because it's now a variable. So let's look at how this actually shows up. One, we see purple over here on the properties panel showing that this property is now driven by a variable. So if we want to edit what we see here within the component, we're going to do so from our variables modal, which we can get to from the toolbar at the top of the screen. But the more important thing is we can go back to these instances and get for free doesn't really apply to these two because these two are paid. So if I select either one of these two instances, now on the properties panel, we have a new property for that variable that we just created. And there's the name of it. I named it button text. And here is the value. Get for free is there by default, but I can change this to sign up now. And I could do the same for this other one here, sign up now. There we go. That's more like it. And we can do that for all kinds of properties. We can make the color editable. We can make the corner radius editable. We could even make the padding editable, whatever we got to do to make this component as flexible as it needs to be. You can also nest components within one another, either by inserting a component as a child of an existing component or what I'm about to do here, which is create a component from this card that already has a button component inside of it. In fact, all of these cards could really be one component. This inverted one could be an inverted variant, just like we did with our button. So to turn all these into the same component, I'm going to start with the biggest one because it's easier to hide extra bullet points than it is to add them in. And I'm going to turn this into a component. So I'll right click, I'll choose create component and pricing card. That's a fine name. I'm going to click create. Now, one thing's for sure, I'm going to need an inverted variant of this. So I'm immediately going to create a new variant. I'm going to make sure I select the parent frame where that white fill is applied. I'm going to change that to my content 100. And then I've got a few layers here that are black now that need to be inverted as well. So here I'm just going to override the color of this style 
turn that into content inverted. I've got a bunch of text layers in here. I'm going to drag to select, but I want to select only the child layers here. So I'm going to hold the option or alt key, and that's only going to select what fits entirely within my bounding box that I'm dragging. So that allows me to just kind of lasso those child layers. And then with those selected, I'm going to edit the text color here. And then I'm going to do the same for the icons that sort of disappeared here. I'm going to hold the alt or option key, and it's only going to select them when they fit completely within my bounding box. See, I don't grab those text layers on accident because they don't fit completely until I get all the way out here with my bounding box. So it allows me to be a bit surgical with my selection. And with these selected, I'm going to switch these two content inverted as well. And last but not least, our button, just like we did on the main design canvas, I can just switch that from the default variant to the inverted variant. And boom, now I've got two variants of my card. And I'll do the same thing here where I rename this one inverted, and I'm going to come over here and rename this one default. Perfect. But in this case, there are quite a few layers that are going to have to change or be changeable at the instance level. We've got the name, the price, the button text, and all of the bullet points down here, all the features. To make these editable at the instance level, we just do the same thing that we did for the button. So with this text layer selected, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create a variable for the content of this text box. I'll choose plain text and I'm going to name it plan name because that's what this text box represents, the name of a plan that you can choose from. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the price. With the price selected, I'm gonna come down here, content, create variable, plain text, and this one is gonna be called price, which is already there, so that's great. I'm gonna click away, and next, we've got this button here, and the button already has that variable set up within it that allows me to override the text. But that variable currently is only accessible when I select an instance of that button. So if I'm selecting an instance of the entire card, I don't get access to that variable. But what I can do is bubble it up one level by adding a variable within the card. So we've got a variable talking to another variable. We can do that. And that's an important thing when we're nesting one component within another. And button text is a perfect name. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to do here. I want to allow the text to be changeable for each and every one of these bullet points so that the features can differ from plan to plan. So I would do the same thing there as we've been doing, and I'm not going to make you watch me do that over and over again. But I'd want the content to have its own variable for bullet point one, bullet point two, bullet point three, bullet point four, et cetera. And I also want to be able to turn off probably feature five and feature six because our middle card only had five features and our first card only had four features. So we can add a variable for the visibility of feature five and feature six. So with feature five selected, I'm going to come down here and for visibility, I'm going to add a variable, create it, and I'm going to be a bit more explicit with the name here, not just visible, but visible feature five. So that way later I'll know which one I'm toggling the visibility of. And then feature six, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a variable for the visibility and visible feature six. Cool. So now when I go back, I have a couple of options. I could either replace these two cards with this component that I just created, like I did with the buttons, or I can delete the cards and then I can duplicate this component a couple of times select the middle one and switch out the variant to inverted. There we go. And then for this one, I can also say feature six visibility. No. And for this first one, I could say feature five and six visibility. No. So I get access to the layer visibility. I get access to the properties within the component from the outside of the component because I've turned them into variables, just like we did with that button. And then, of course, I have the text variables that I added, like this plan here, which we'll say free, and the price, we can say $0 a month. And then the rest, the features and all that good stuff, I didn't add those variables. I don't want you to have to sit here and watch me do that, but you can add those variables for any and every text layer that you might need to change at the instance level. When it's time to manage our components, we can head back to the Assets panel. And here we get a little plus icon where we can actually create a new component without even having anything selected. We can create an empty component and start to build within that. 
Or once we have a bunch of components created, we can start to organize them in new folders. And we can also sort alphabetically when we have more and more components built up here. As far as managing components themselves, we've got a little overflow menu here and we can click to insert a component, just one more way to insert a component. We can also edit from here or you can just click the name of the component to edit it. You can find instances of this component much the same way we found layers that were using textiles and color styles in a previous lesson. And we can also rename, duplicate and delete. The next few things on this menu are all about sharing components with other projects either in your own workspace or virtually anywhere else. To make a component accessible across all of your projects, you can come down here to library and you can add this component to your workspace library. And that will allow you to go into any other project in your workspace, hit the shortcut command forward slash or control forward slash on a PC and search for any component you've added to your workspace library. And those instances will remain linked to the project where you created the component. You can unlink them or you can detach them completely. But if they remain linked and you make any changes to the main component, it will allow you to pull that update into any instance in any other document in your entire workspace. And copy URL allows you to copy a link to a component and paste it into another project or even share it with someone else to use in their projects. In fact, the Framer community is full of talented designers and developers sharing components they've made that you can drop into your own sites with just a couple of clicks. And there you have it. Now you know what components are all about, how to create and insert them, how to edit them and create variants, how to create variables to make component instances much more flexible, and how to manage and share components with other projects and even other people. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.